Hey, John here. Remember our school reel, this decagon shaped reel, and these digits, right? So we've now covered enough material to look at the application that I designed to print these strips of numbers that fit on these score counting reels. So I can print them out and rubber cement them on. The key is get this thing printed out on a sheet of paper. And I've got these nice markers right here. So I know where to cut them. So they're on the top and on the, on the bottom down here. So presumably then I'd lay a, a, a ruler along here and take an X-Acto knife and I can cut these out into perfect strips. And then I've got them and I can glue them on here. So let's look at the uh, program that I wrote th to print this out, to get all the spacing just right. Before we dive into the full program, let's look at some of the stuff that I'm going to use in that program. Uh, here's a couple of handy little routines that simply convert units for us, right? Here's a, here's a procedure called IN that will convert inches into points. So every inch is 72 points. So if you push some value N onto the stack and then you invoke the IN procedure, it'll take 72 and multiply N by 72 and give you a uh, value in points. No problem. Same thing for millimeters. One millimeter is that many points. So again, if I wanted to, express some uh, a position in millimeters i would just put mm after it here i am expressing one inch in x one inch in the y dimension and then a move to we've seen all that before uh once i'm there what am i going to do so this is the this right here is the is the crux of this thing all right you're going to see in a minute i'm going to write a loop and it's going to count from zero to nine and i'm going to want to print those values on the page how do we do that because when you're when you're when you're counting, you've got integers. When you're printing, you need a string. Okay, so let's look at this first thing here. What am I doing here? I'm going to go to a position. I'm going to put uh, an integer value on the stack, and then I'm going to say one string. What this does is it pushes an empty string, a string with one character in it, onto the stack. The character that's in this string is a null, and PostScript will express it like this, okay? A backslash with three zeros. That's a null character. Now I type CVS. When we do a CVS, we're saying convert to string. Take an integer value and a string off the stack and, and format that integer as a string, and then you end up with what you've seen before, the digit inside the parentheses, which means it's printable by the show command. So if I, do, if I run this through events... We should see this at one one right there. A gigantic big number one. Why? Because I set the font to 75 millimeters high. All right. That's a pretty big, that's a big size. <laughs> okay. So a giganto thing, right? Uh, okay. Now let's look more deeply at this thing and see how it fails. What happens if this thing has two digits in it instead of one? All right, now events is just going to die and it's going to sit here and whine and not know what it's doing. So let's run us through ghost script and we'll get a actual error. Actually, here's the error you're going to get. It's a range check error. Events did spit that out in a place that is hard to see when you're looking at the GUI. All right, so here's the more detailed dump of the error from ghost script. It says, look, I executed a CVS and it failed well, I checked the range of values that I could put in this string. And it makes sense that the range would be only single-digit values. I put a two-digit value in there. Well, if I really wanted that, I would come down here, and I would, I'd would i need to know this when I designed my program to uh, allocate a string with two characters in it instead of one. So now that fixes my problem, all right? I suppose it does beg the question, and I don't actually know the answer to this, so this is always dangerous. What happens if I put nine, nine, a regular string with 9-9 nine, nine in there? I mean, one would argue that's a two-character string on the stack. Does, uh, does CVS require that the string be filled with nulls? I don't know. Let's find out. Run it again. No, apparently it does not. Uh, I'm not sure that this is concrete proof that any two-digit or two-character length string would do for this task or not, but it is interesting, a uh, little empirical test there. That would require looking it up in, in detail in the Red Book, 
uh, the formal language spec to find out officially whether CVS just cares about any string with some digits, enough digits in it to hold it, or does it have to have a specialized uh, nulled out string? Let's do this and find out just for fun, because this is just ghost script. I don't know if all versions of PostScript will do this. Will it put the one, two right here? And leave all those nines alone, or will it change them to spaces? What will it do now? I don't know. Uh, apparently, all the rest are are um, are destroyed in some way. Okay, let's um, let's for fun have a look closer look. You know, while we're in here, let's uh, let me learn something while we're at it. If I put twelve on the stack. Mm, the comment went with it. Okay, great. And then I do uh, whatever I just did like this, and I type CVS. What really is happening here? Hmm. So somehow it truncated all these out there. It didn't put like what I wanted to see was whether there were spaces or null characters or something like that in there. So that's kind of neat to know. Eh, whatever. Okay, so now let's look at the real deal here. Let's look at the program I wrote to render the the strips of numbers. All right. So we just looked at this. We just looked at this. These are just giving names to uh, some constants, right? Uh, when we render the page, let me get a visual of that page up here. Okay. So here's the uh, rendering of that page. And we can see that there's a little margin in the X here. It doesn't just use the far left edge of the page. The reason for that is a lot of printers can't print all the way to the edge of the page. That's called a full bleed uh, the, when you actually hit all the way to the edge of the paper. And laser printers generally can't do that, so I tend to move it in about a quarter of an inch. In case I want to print something all the way over uh, to the edge of my reel, I need to move it in there in order to get ink there. Okay, So that's what's going on there. That's why I have a page margin in the Y and in the X. So I move it up a little bit in Y, move it in a little bit in the X. That's what these thingies are doing right here. The padding variable here is just me tweaking this. As we saw before, when I move, like I, you're going to see in a minute, I move to hit like right here, and then I say uh, show a, a single digit string to render this zero and so on using the CVS and the string that you'll see in a second. But the position is like right here. And you know that sometimes the string uh, kind of, when you do show, it moves in a little bit and then it shows it. Well, it turns out I added an extra 10 points of padding here because with this particular font, they were smooshed up to the left a little bit too far. I just did that with an eyeball on there. It's uh, It would be subject of another video in the future. We'll come up with like version 2 of this program later on, and I'll show you how to center them uh, geometrically based on the actual uh, ink and the bounded regions for each one of these characters. But that's a subject for another video. For now, I'm just going to tweak these things to make it look right. This is perfectly fine. If you did this professionally, no one probably ever even know unless you worked for me and I'd look at your code and go, ha, you should have used, you know, a care path and a, and a path box. But that's really no big deal. As long as it looks right and you can cut it out, we're good. So that's what this 10 points of padding is here. Now, 51 millimeters is the actual thickness of my Decagon reels, and the facets on that reel are each 62 millimeters high, about, like 62.1 something, close enough. All right, given these dimensions, I can move around on the sheet and I can get all these digits placed on here. What's the font I'm going to use? I chose the new Century School Book Bold because I thought it looked kind of neat. I kind of like the way these bally thingies show up on the twos and the threes and stuff. I look kind of old school. Uh, why not? What font size did I choose? Again, I just rendered them until I found one that looked about right. As you know, the font size is usually not really. Uh, uh, directly connected to how big it really is. This is called the design size, not the actual size. Again, we'll look more on how fonts show up and how to move around and find out where they really, uh, where the digits and characters really are in some uh, future videos. So here's the whole ball game right here. We have a loop. We have a for loop that counts from zero to nine by one. It makes sense. 
right? Because that's what we want on our reel. Okay. Oh, it should make some sense that we're going to count, right? The for loop puts each one of these digits on the stack, and I'm going to convert it to a string, and then down here I'm going to figure out where to put it, and then I'm going to show it. It's as simple as that. And the simplicity is hiding all in here, right? Okay, so let's look at what's really going on here. I need to come up with an X value and a Y value based on the number that I'm plotting. So in this particular sized font, I noticed that four of them fit nicely on one page. So I hard-coded all this to be based on fours. How does this thing work? Well, I take the number that I get from the for loop and I double it. I need one for the X coordinate that I'm going to calculate from the, from the for counter, the iterate, and I need another one for the Y value, okay? This line of code is commented out for simplicity of understanding. We'll come back to this in a minute. There's my game with the CVS. So the second thing that's on the stack, right? I duplicate the thing that the for loop put on there. I make another one and I make a string out of it. I know it's gonna be only one digit because that's all I put on there. So I say put one, a string of length one in there and then convert the I value to a string. I flop them around, so I have the I over here now. I dupe it again, and I'm going to change the name. I'm not going to call it I anymore. I'm going to call it the Y and the X. They start off both equaling the Y iterate value. Now, how do I figure out where to put these things? Well, for the X value, that's how far this direction I'm going to be. I either need to be here or here or here. That's all I really need to worry about. Well, uh, that value is based on the value of the iterate divided by 4. If I throw away the, the, the floating point part, which is what floor does, okay? So if I take 0 divided by 4, I get 0. 1 divided by 4 is 0.25. You know, zero remainder one. Two divided by four is zero remainder two. Three divided by four is zero remainder three. So if you throw the remainder away, these are all zero. Once I get over to four, five, six, and seven, divided by four, it's 1.0, 1 1.25, 1. you know, whatever, and so on. These floating point stuff, as long as I throw it away, I either get zero or a one or a two. Not a problem, okay? So that's what's going on here. I divide it by four, and I take the floor of the thing, okay? Now, I then multiply that value. Remember, I got a zero, one, or a two times the real width, which will give me either zero or one width in or two widths in. Then I add my X padding, which you'll see is this distance right in here. Once that's done, I basically have my, my X value. You'll notice I then see add the padding, right? I added the margin. I think I misspoke a second ago. I add the margin, that's this guy here. The padding, remember, is how much I want to indent into the center to, to make this thing centered, right? Because otherwise these things would be further over to the left, obviously, since it was set to 10. I just did that to tweak this to move them a little bit further over to the right. That's what the padding is doing. Now I exchange the X and Y's around because I just calculated X. I now need to calculate Y, and it's done kind of the opposite way. Instead of dividing and taking the floor, I'm dividing and taking the remainder. I'm throwing away the quotient and saving the remainder. That's what mod does, okay? So if I take 0 mod 4, I get 0. 0 mod 1, I get 1. And so on. This is the remainder after the division. 4 mod 4 is 0. 5 mod 4 is 0 because... The, or rather, one, rather, I should say, because 5 divided by 4 is 1 remainder 1, so 5 mod 4 is 1. 2 and 3, and then 8 it gives you 0, and 9 gives you 1 again. So that's what you get for the y here, and you do the same kind of thing we did for x. You multiply the y value, which I'm going to either 0, 1, 2, or 3, by how big 
the each one of the decagon real facets are that's basically going to be my baseline advance that i'm going to use here the letting between you know, from from baseline to baseline should be the height of the facets on the on the reel i then add a, a y margin which says you know otherwise the zero would be all the way down here i need it up in the page so that the ink won't bleed into the edge like like the same with the x's right i then move there and show the one digit so I just simply do this around and around and around the loop, and not a problem. And that's why, by the way, I commented this line here out, because it's easy to see while it's rendered this way that the when when the i value is zero, where does it end up? When the i value is one, and so on, right? What this one line of code does here, if I turn it on, and then I save this. Watch what happens to the digits. They simply reverse themselves. So what am I really doing? Well, before I convert the, the iterate to a string, I say calculate 9 minus the iterate. Well, when it starts at 0, the 9 minus 0 is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. It just simply reverses the, 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 uh, the digit, it reverses the counting for the for the value that's printed by the show down here, but leaves the i value alone. So i counts from 0, 1, 2, 3, just like you saw before, but the string value goes 9, 8, 7, 6 at the same time. That's why I removed this in the first pass, so we could see what's going on and don't have to keep reversing in our head, right? Now, the fiducial markers are going to be really easy. We've seen enough of this junk before. This is just drawing a bunch of lines. Uh, how does this thing work? We want a uh, you know kind of a darkish green with a line width of one, and all I'm going to do here is count zero to three in a for loop by one. So I'm going to have this is my zero with my one, my two, and my three. All I'm going to do is same kind of thing I did for these digits, but I really only have to worry about x now. The y's are going to be hard coded, so I take the real width. Multiply whatever the iterate is by the real width, and that gives me either 0 or 1 or 2 and 3 and so on times the real width. And I add the x margin again. Otherwise, this thing would be all the way over here where you can't really print on real paper. But the, you know, the, uh, the, the renderer, the simulator will. Um, then what do I do here? I duplicate it because I need two copies of X. One's go I'm going to use one to draw the line down here, another one to draw that line up there. So what is this thing doing? I got an X value. I got two X values in the stack. I put a, a zero in there for my Y, and I go there. Then I do a relative line uh, north, 25 points, which gives me this guy here, and I say stroke. Then I say give me a new path, use the same X value, which is way over here, but this time go up 11 inches, which is the top of this page, and draw a line down 25 points and stroke that line. Next time through the loop, X is 1 times real width plus page margin x and i'm drawing these lines there and so on that's the whole ball game that's all i need to draw my digits for my decagons and then i just print this baby out cut it up and i put them on my reel what do you think let me know in the comments below thanks for watching bye